everybody, Dave really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Hakuoki, Demon of the Fleeting Blossom. We are on Chikage Kazuma's route, and in the last episode we finally actually caught up with him and we're hanging out with him now. He just saved us from some enemies and we found out that the Shinsengumi have been betrayed and are walking into a very bad situation and we really want to help them, but we don't really stand much of a chance on our own, so I think we're going to try to convince him to come help us. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. Kazum aside. You don't understand. Here, let me show you. Without waiting for me to follow, he turned and began to walk. I hesitated for a moment, not sure if it was wise to follow him or not. If he intended to harm me, now was my chance to escape. But if he intended to harm you, he would have done it already. <laughs> no. If he'd wanted to hurt me, he could have done so already. Almost the exact words I just said. I nodded quickly to myself and set off after him. Calling whatever Kazuma was following a path would have been generous. At best, he seemed to be simply heading up. The Imperial Court has sent a secret message to all the domains in Kyoto. It says that the Satsuma Choshu army will raise the Imperial battle standard. Kazuma's tone was so matter-of-fact, and his pace was so brisk, that for a moment I didn't understand what he'd said. Why is he walking so fast when he does everything else so lazily? Then realization hit, bringing me up short. The Imperial Battle Standard? The standard was only granted by the Imperial Court to armies who acted specifically in its name. Anyone who opposed an army marching under it was a criminal and a traitor. Then, you're saying that the Imperial Court believes in what the Satsuma and Choshu were trying to do? He nodded. The Satsuma Choshu army will become the Imperial army, and the men loyal to Tokugawa will become rebels. I have no doubt that each domain is considering their options very carefully right now. Attacking the Imperial army was a serious offense to the Emperor. Even domains that had been especially loyal to the Shogunate were likely wavering. I didn't want to believe that the domains who had been loyal to the Shogunate for so long would be treated so easily. Yodo Castle is the headquarters of the Shogunate army. And the Owari have always been friends of the Shogun. My voice felt very small. Kazuma stopped walking. Have a look then. Tell me what you believe. He gestured out in front of us. Oh no. Below us, I could see the city of Kyoto engulfed in the fires of war. Cannons boomed and rifles crackled, and shogunate soldiers fell as the fire stretched higher and higher, licking at the sky. Kazuma pointed to a group of cannons and riflemen. Is... is that the Yodo? I hadn't really thought Kazuma was lying, but a part of me had hoped he was. Looking down at the scene laid out before me, there was no question that he had been telling me the truth. It would be pointless to try to find the Shinsengumi now. This war is already over. The Satsuma and Choshu will win. Your friends can fight all they like. It won't change anything. Why did this happen? Lord Yoshinobu had capitulated to their initial demands and ceded power to the Imperial Court. It was clear to everyone that he had no intention of opposing the Emperor. Why did the Emperor give them the Imperial Battle Standard? Anyone who supported the forces of the Shogun would be considered criminals now. The Satsuma and Shoshu have spent 250 years hating the Tokugawa and waiting for this moment. They won't be satisfied until Yoshinobu and his entire family are destroyed. There was no rancor in his voice. He had no hate for the Tokugawa, but no love for them either. I thought that Lord Yoshinobu was on good terms with the Emperor. Compared to shoguns who preceded him, at least he had always been happy to cooperate with the court. The winner of this war will be whoever can seize control of the Imperial Court. Then, the Tokugawa had been abandoned? But there were people fighting for the Tokugawa who devoted their lives to the Emperor. The Shinsengumi had always tried to honor the Emperor, even as they served the Shogun. They would never have intended to defy the Imperial Court. Kazuma suddenly looked withdrawn, almost sad. There was a long pause before he spoke. Devotion, huh? In the end, it doesn't matter. Demons, Shinsengumi, we are all only pebbles in the avalanche. I was completely powerless. Even if I didn't care for the decisions of the Imperial Court, there was nothing I could do to change what was happening to my country. 
I knew that, but still... It's not over yet. Perhaps I was hoping that Kazuma would acknowledge that there was some tiny glimmer of hope left. I wouldn't go so far as to say that I trusted him, but I didn't believe he would lie to me. There were a lot of soldiers left at Osaka Castle, and there are more in Edo. If we can get back there... You don't understand. There'll be rebels. Traitors. I could hear exasperation in his voice. This whole country will become their enemy. It's over. But... Before I could respond, a raucous cheer drifted up to us from the city below. They've raised the Imperial Standard. Now the Satsuma Choshu Army is the Imperial Army, and the Tokugawa are enemies of the court. The Emperor will get the order for their destruction soon. I was at a loss for words. The heavy air, thick with the soot of the burning city, and the sweat, blood, and anger of the two armies pressed down on me like a heavy blanket. Kazuma seemed to be waiting for me to speak, but I didn't know what to say. I asked the first question that came to mind. What would they do now that they had the Imperial Standard? They'll crush the Tokugawa and take everything that belonged to the Shogunate. All they want is money. That's all they've ever wanted. Nothing has changed. Humans are still greedy, small-minded thieves. I hadn't expected him to so readily give up possibly secret information about the men he worked for. It bothered me that he called humans greedy and small-minded, though. So, you're saying that all these people put their lives in danger for money? The anger in my voice didn't seem to phase him, if he even noticed it. War is just an excuse for large-scale theft. It's nothing but a scramble for money and power. I'm sure there are people like that, but not everyone is fighting just so they can get rich or powerful. Cosmo raised an eyebrow. Really? I'm not talking about the commanders and generals. The soldiers on the bottom are just the same. Those on the bottom look for easy ways to fight so they can survive and be rewarded by their superiors. Have you already forgotten the men who attacked you? Bandits, battlefield thieves, that is the reality of war. No, I haven't forgotten about them. But there are some people who fight for the sake of other people too. Kazuma nodded. You mean the Shinsengumi? I'll grant you that. What? Had he really just acknowledged that the Shinsengumi weren't the thieving bottom feeders he thought the rest of humanity to be? My eyes widened with surprise, but he continued. Unfortunately, they were on the side that lost. Whatever motivated them is irrelevant now. Just as Kazuma had predicted, the Shogunate army began to retreat under the Yodo bombardment. He said they were probably going to Osaka Castle and would retreat to Edo next when Osaka fell. Even in Edo, they would lose, Kazuma said. He seemed quite sure of it. I'll be leaving. I can take you, but... He stopped mid-sentence. Kazuma, step away from her! I heard a familiar, dignified voice from behind me. Sen? She was glaring at Kazuma furiously, and behind her... Kimikiku? Oh, no. Amagiri! Wait, so who's with who now? Well, I will grant that whoever controls Kyoto wins this engagement. I saw her eyes flick to the burning city, and a shadow of grief passed over her face. That most certainly does not mean you are given leave to do as you please. Her tone broke to no dissent. If you choose to take her by force, then I will put all the demons in Japan on your scent. W what Kazuma seemed unconcerned, but I was rather shocked. All of the demons in the country seemed like overkill. You'll have nowhere to hide. Your own people will turn on you. Is that what you want? Kazuma ignored Zen's threats, and instead shifted his cold gaze to Amagiri. What is this Amagiri? Why did you bring her here? Amagiri frowned. She asked. I can hardly refuse the commands of a demon of her stature. Then Zen had worried for me, and come to warn Kazuma against harming me. She had asked Amagiri where he could be found, and Amagiri had bought her here. Finding me and Kazuma had likely confirmed her suspicions. I have no interest in taking her now. After all, if he'd wanted to kidnap me, he could have easily done so before Sen arrived. Really? I confess that I'm rather surprised to find you so reasonable. Are you scheming something? Scheming? <laughs> yes, I suppose you can say that. His eyes narrowed. I want her to see me crush them entirely, and I want them to see me leave with her, my prize. 
His voice had an almost sing-song cadence to it. Uh, which I didn't do, sorry. What fun is in all of this, if I can't use her to destroy hope and so despair? Kazuma's lips twisted into a cruel smile. <laughs> Suddenly, I regretted letting myself think even for a moment that he might not be a bad person. With the Shinsengumi gone, I can't do any of that. This game is over. Then, all of this had been for his amusement? Sen frowned. Has no one ever told you that you have a dreadful personality? Only people of no consequence. Kazuma gave her an arrogant sneer and Sen sighed with, with exasperation. Well, you really are rather like a storybook demon, aren't you? That managed to get a reaction out of him. May I assume, then, that you have given up on her? You may, for now. Kazuma said no more, only stared down at Sen with a mixture of arrogance and amusement. Well, I pray that you do not change your mind. In any event, what will you do? Though her tone was light, her eyes were still as hard as steel. I have completed what obligations I had to the Satsuma. I have no intention of involving myself any further in human affairs. He did not hesitate to answer. Perhaps he had made his mind up quite some time before. Still, as someone who's been a part of this war, I would like to see how it will end. I mean to go to Edo. Edo? If Kazuma's predictions continued to prove correct, then the Shinsengumi were probably heading there as well. I wanted to find them again, and Edo was my hometown. His mention of it had awoken a sad nostalgia in me. With Kyoto under the control of the new Imperial Army, I certainly couldn't remain there, and the more I thought about it, the more I realized I wanted to go to Edo. And I must choose to go with Kazuma. I wonder if I went alone if that would lead to a bad ending of me dying. Um... Kazuma? I hesitated. Sen's not going to be happy about this. If you're going to Edo, could you take me with you? <laughs> Both of their faces. It was the first time I'd seen Kazuma actually look surprised, but his expression was nothing next to Sen's. <laughs> you want me to... Hilarious. Are you serious? He laughed out loud. It was a rather unpleasant sound. Sen advanced toward me, and a credulous finger pointed at Kazuma. Of all the people who could escort you to Kyoto, you would ask him? Well, I had no doubt he saw me as little more than a tool for extending his legacy, but... He had said he wouldn't try and kidnap me, unless he could shame the Shinsengumi by doing so, and I was reasonably sure he meant it. I don't think he'd lie. He's got a strange personality, but I think he hates lies, whatever his other flaws might be. Yeah, but he could also change his mind. Sen blinked, slightly stunned. <laughs> Even Amagiri. Even Amagiri was wide-eyed, and apparently frozen in place. Well, I managed to get a rise out of everyone here. So I... um... Kazuma stared at me silently. Whatever he was thinking was a mystery to me, but after several moments... His face twisted up in a sinister smirk. You can follow me if you want. Oh. Then he would let me go with him? Huh. <sighs> Are you quite sure? It was clear she didn't approve of the idea, but she respected my choices enough not to try and stop me. After all, I had made up my mind, and Kazuma had even given me a permission to accompany him. We would head for Edo together. You promise you won't try anything, yes? Amagiri... I would be much obliged if you would accompany them. He politely inclined his head. As you wish, my lady. Sen smiled with relief, and I let out a silent sigh of the same. You know, I'm actually more interested in learning about Amagiri during Heisuke's route than Heisuke himself. Because <laughs> Amagiri, I'm puzzled by him. Because I thought, I mean, apparently these three demons are not really friends exactly. And we already know what the deal with Shironoi is since we learned that in Harada's route. And we've got an idea about Shikage also, and he's pretty much a loner, so what's with you, Amagiri? Thank you, Sen. Sen's eyes met mine, and her smile deepened as she gave me a tiny nod. I was sad to leave her, the only other woman I'd befriended in Kyoto, but there was no time for sad goodbyes. I turned to Kazuma and Amagiri. Um, thank you for helping me. I bowed deeply, and when I came back up, I saw Kazuma smiling. 
On the contrary, I'll be happy to show you just how foolish humans are. Uh, I wanted to argue that point, but I kept my opinions to myself. After all, I knew that humans could make mistakes just like anyone else. Chapter 5 March, 1868 I left Kyoto for Edo in hopes that I might be able to rejoin the Shinsengumi there. Kazuma and Amagiri accompanied me, and consequently our journey was relatively free of trouble. I wasn't sure if it was Sen's influence, Amagiri's watchful eye, or something else entirely that kept Kazuma in line, but he did nothing suspicious and kept mostly to himself. After several days, we finally found ourselves in Edo. No sooner had we entered the city, however, than Omagiri asked to attend some business of his own, alone. Hey, you're supposed to protect me! Kazuma waved him away, with no apparent concern. I would have preferred Omagiri to stay and not leave me alone with Kazuma, but if there was something he felt bound to attend to, I could hardly stop him. Though Kazuma made me nervous and uncomfortable, he seemed to be entirely at ease. He took us to the Satsuma Daimyo's residence to ask after the location of the Shinsengumi. I wasn't sure if he'd developed an interest in helping me or was searching for the Shinsengumi for his own reasons. He might just want to see them die. When he returned, his face said that whatever news he'd received hadn't been what he'd hoped for. It looks as though we've missed them. The Shinsengumi is left for Kofu. Little good it will do. Kofu? The Shinsengumi had left Osaka and come to Edo by sea, just as Kazuma had predicted. They'd also changed their name to the Koyo Regulatory Company. They had been sent away from Edo to keep the peace in the area surrounding Kofu Castle. Yoshinobu shut himself up in a temple. Why go to war when your leader is running from it? Um... They are going to attack an opposing army with two, maybe three thousand men. Idiotic. Was he worried about the Shinsengumi? Well, I don't know if it was the smart choice, but I don't think they're really thinking about winning or losing. What drove them into the Shinsengumi was something greater, something more profound than simple victory. I wasn't truly one of them, so perhaps I didn't understand fully, but... They're doing what they believe is right, I'm sure of it. Kazuma turned to me with sudden anger in his eyes, and I took an involuntary step back. They're just desperate. All they're doing is looking for a place to die. Desperate. He had no respect for the suffering the men of the Shinsengumi had been through, or the strength of their beliefs. I didn't think there was a single man among them who was just looking for a battle to die in. I wanted to argue, to tell him how wrong he was, but instead I kept my mouth shut. Although I felt I was defending my friends, I had no more knowledge of their inner thoughts and desires than Kazuma did. Arguing based on assumption and suspicion was pointless. Besides, I already knew what I had to do next. Thank you for bringing me to Edo. I gave him a shallow bow. I couldn't allow myself to rely on Kazuma anymore. I'm planning to go to Kofu Castle and join up with the Shinsengumi. My announcement didn't seem to surprise Kazuma. It was almost as if he'd known what I would do before I did. Do what you want. But when you find them, be sure to tell them that I'll be coming to take you away eventually. <sighs> it was a strange, unsettling message and I left Kazuma with mixed feelings. <sighs> I turned around to look back at where I'd been, but Kazuma had disappeared into the ocean of people filling the streets. Kazuma. Perhaps he was kinder than I'd realized, although his motives were still a mystery. He's just doing stuff for fun. Oh my! I found my way back to my old house so that I might gather a few things to prepare for my trip. Left unattended for years, the interior was covered in a thick layer of dust. This would take forever to clean up. If I was going to meet up with the Shinsengumi, I needed to depart for Kofu as soon as possible, which meant I didn't have time to spare to clean my house. Besides, even if I did, there was no one to live in it anymore. I let out a small sad sigh. Is there someone there? I jumped at the voice behind me, but it was strangely familiar. Is it Dr. Matsumoto? No! Uh, you kind of gave yourself away there. <laughs> no, there's nobody here. I spun around. Father! I didn't expect that. 
Chizuru, you were back in Edo? His face broke into a broad smile. I'm so glad you're safe. I'm glad you're safe too. There have been times when I thought I would never see my father again, but here he was. Against all odds, we'd survived the fires of war and made our way home to Edo. I could feel tears of happiness pricking at the corners of my eyes. Where were you? I went looking for you in Kyoto. I... I was working for the Satsuma and Choshu. Then the rumors have been true. But they finally let you go? Raising the Imperial Battle Standard had all but assured the victory of the Satsuma Choshu army. If that was the case, they wouldn't have further use for my father. Or so I hoped. Actually, I'm still researching the Furies for the Imperial Army. Furies? Furies were dangerous, unnatural things that should never have been created, but I was sure that my father was only doing research on them because he thought it could help someone. What sort of research? If he had learned a way to turn Furies back into humans, then I would have to let the Shinsengumi know. I wasn't prepared for what he said next. Edo Castle still hasn't surrendered. My job is to use my army of Furies to set fire to Edo. What he was saying didn't make sense. Why would he want to set fire to Edo? He continued on, oblivious. All of this is for the sake of the Imperial Army. Was he saying that he thought it was alright to burn down Edo so long as the Imperial Army said so? I couldn't understand why my father was doing what he was doing, but I did understand one thing. He wasn't being forced to help them, he was doing it willingly. Father? That was when I noticed the color of his eyes. They were gold. Why? There was no denying it now. My father had changed. As he reached out a hand to me, I felt fear grip my spine. <laughs> the power the water of life has given to me is amazing. Join me, Chizuru. Become a fury. Terror tightened my chest. No! I slapped his hand aside just as a familiar shadow appeared in the still open doorway. Kazuma! He spared me a quick glance before turning those cold eyes on my father. What is this Kodo? My father had frozen the moment he saw Kazuma, and I saw him swallow before he responded. Lord Kazuma, what brings you here? Kazuma ignored him. Answer my question. Research of Furies was to be halted. Why are you continuing? Uh, uh, you see... His voice faltered. You used the Furies as a bargaining chip to secure your position in the Imperial Army, didn't you? Kazuma's eyes were angry slits. My father's mouth opened and closed, like a fish gasping for air. Ah! Then suddenly he moved, shoving me toward Kazuma and turning to run. I assumed Kazuma would simply dodge my flying body and pursue my father, but... Surprise! One of his arms stopped my fall. What? Unfortunately, the time it took for Kazuma to catch me was enough for my father to escape. When we turned to give chase, he was already gone. I'm sorry. I stepped back quickly, but Kazuma didn't seem to even be paying attention to me. He was too busy glaring at the door my father had escaped through. He's gone. He didn't follow, only turned and walked toward the front door, scowling angrily. I followed. Then stopped short when I found Amagiri waiting for us. Why are you here? Why is everybody here? Why in the world is everyone gathering at my house? He looked nearly as surprised to see us as I was to see him. Kazuma frowned. That's my question. What are you doing here? There was an accusatory tone in his voice, but Amagiri seemed to either not care or not notice. I was looking for Kodo. He went on to explain he had heard my father had sold his services to the Imperial Army after Amagiri and Kazuma left Satsuma employ. Amagiri had decided to look into the truth of the rumor and chosen not to discuss it with Kazuma until he was more sure of the facts. He had also discovered that a huge force of Furies was already on its way to Edo. <sighs> after what my father had told me, it seemed that Amagiri's rumors were almost certainly true. I was still stunned from all that had happened, but I heard Kazuma say with Venom that the Furies were mindless beasts that had no right to exist. 
Even the normally mild-tempered Amagiri seemed to agree and claimed he could not allow my father to continue unimpeded. I... I can't believe it. I'd seen with my own eyes just how much my father had changed, but a part of me, the part that still remembered how kind and loving he had been, had remembered all the good times we had shared during my childhood, refused to accept it. It was nothing more than a sick joke. It had to be. <sighs> no, I knew what the truth was. I just didn't want it to be the truth. You can believe it or choose not to. It's up to you. I looked at him, startled, and he continued. My father, he told me, was not my father at all. Though we were both demons from the Yukimoto clan, my father was not related to me by blood. No, that's not possible. I was a direct heir to the masters of the clan, but my father was from a smaller, weaker family. Since I'd only recently learned of my demon heritage, I was far from knowledgeable about their standings and bloodlines of the various demon families, but it seems that the demise of the Yukimura was a rather famous story. I desperately wanted his words to be some elaborate lie, but whatever else he was, Kazuma was not a liar. So, I'm the only person who didn't know. Again. Kazuma, Amagiri, and Sen had all almost certainly known the truth about my father. Even if we aren't directly related, that doesn't change the fact that he raised me. Certainly true, but he doesn't really seem to be the same person anymore either. Alright, well, I gotta stop reading for now. We'll pick this up in the next episode. So, hope to see you there or in some of my other videos. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. Do really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.